What's going on with you guys? This is a brand new YouTube channel and I'm going to start it off by showing you guys how to create a great radar or uh, scanner effect inside of After Effects CS5, CS6, or CC. And then I'll show you how to composite it in with elements from Element 3D uh, from Video Copilot. Let's take a look at what we're going to create. Alright, so it looks pretty good. Let's create a new composition. You can set this to whatever resolution you want, but I'm going to use 1920 by 1080 And we're going to call this screen and hit enter. Now we want to create a new solid. We want to make this a white solid and hit OK. Now we want to apply a grid effect. Mine is under generate and grid for After Effects CS5. Yours might be elsewhere where you can just, you know, type it in right here and drag it onto the layer. Uh, with the grid effect, you'll notice that if you want to apply a mask to it, it will not respond to the mask. But there's a simple fix for this. Just hit layer, pre-compose, and then move all attributes into the new composition. We'll call this grid. And hit enter. Now, if we try and draw the mask, it works perfectly. Hit V to bring up your selection tool after you draw the mask. And, you know, move it to how you want it. Probably in the center of the screen. Uh, bring up the feather options and just feather that out a lot and then also expand the mask That looks pretty good now you want to create a new solid make it white again and uh, Create a rectangular mask straight down the middle You want it to be pretty skinny though, and if it's not in the center you can hit V on the keyboard and move the mask That looks good now we want to uh, duplicate the mask with Command-D or Control-D on Windows. Hit R to bring up the rotation settings and set this value to 90 degrees. Hit Enter. Now hit S on the keyboard, unlink these two values, and uh, stretch it out until it's at the edges of the screen. That looks like a pretty good crosshair effect. If you want to, you might want to... Uh, take down the mask expansion just a tad on both of them. This one was negative six, so then this one must be negative six as well. All right. That looks pretty good. Now we want to uh, apply an effect that looks like light is leaking in around the edges, like maybe from a uh, uh, display, an old display. Hit OK. Uh, and now you want to draw a rectangular mask like right through the middle of the layer just like that it's pretty good now you want to subtract the mask and uh, feather it out a lot and then expand it so it's just at the edges there you go looks pretty nice now we want to give it the uh, scanning over effect so create a new solid make it white again and this time, when you draw the rectangular mask, you want to zoom out, and you want to start from way up here, so that when we feather out the mask, the top half will not be will not be affected by the feathering. So just drop it right there, um, and then feather it out a lot. Maybe even ex uh, subtract, may uh, put a negative number for the expansion. Looks pretty good. Hit V on the keyboard to, you know, get out of any tools that you might have been in so you don't mess anything up, you little child. Uh, and you want to keyframe this so that it just kind of like scans over the screen. So you want to go hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position settings, keyframe this, and you want to take it down right below the bottom of the screen. Now maybe go to like three seconds, maybe two seconds. And then just drag it up. Now, if we uh, play this, looks pretty nice. Now, if you want to uh, color grade this or, you know, color this to whatever you want it to be, just pre-compose all these layers. We'll call it screen. We'll call it screen uh, two. Hit enter. Now you can just drop on a uh, tint effect 
and change the map white to whatever color you might want your screen to be. Don't make it all the way saturated. I mean, you can if you want to, but I think it looks a little bit more realistic when the saturation is towards the middle, around 50%. I want mine to be green. That looks pretty good. So now we have this radar effect. All right, now I'm gonna show you how you can composite some of those uh, 2D effects in with Element 3D models. So let's create a new composition and this we'll call this Element. Uh, set this to a semi-normal resolution so that you know, it'll play on people's devices, please. I hate when people record vertically on their cell phone, and then you try and watch it on your computer, and there's, like, huge black bars on the sides, which I really hate that. It's instead of 16.9, it's 9.16, which is just dumb. Just make a normal resolution. And hit OK. Uh, <laughs> let's create a new solid. Make it any color you want, because it's going to become transparent once we apply Video Copilot's Element 3D. Uh, go to the Scene Setup. And we want to go to Motion Design 2 Bundle. If you don't have this, make your own, you lazy bum. Go to the screens, and you want to pick screen 04. That works pretty well with what we've made. Again, I'm, I'm sorry for being so rude, okay? But you can just go into a free program like Blender and create uh, something like this. Um, again, I recommend you, you, you purchase Video Copilot's pack because it's, it's pretty high quality and I don't actually have to do any of the work, so that's great. Uh, go to the matte white um, material and turn that off. And you want to go to the plastic black. And you can kind of see how, you can see it from the back, but if you go in there, it's not. It's not there. So you want to go to the settings and turn on draw back faces. So it'll work. And you just want to hit OK. Now you want to bring in your, uh, your screen composition and just drop that right on top. Uh, one thing that you want to do, you want to go into the composition and you want to create a new solid under it. Make it a black solid, by the way. And put that under your screen composition. So if I turn on the alpha channel button so you can see it, that's it before and this is it after we added that layer. So that you, know, you can't see uh, behind this effect. Um... So you want to go back into your composition, uh, into element, and you can kind of see you can't see the element behind it now. You just see the screen. Mm -hmm. You want to make the screen a 3D layer, and you want to create a brand new camera. Uh, so you can see the element in there. You want to take the screen and just scale it way down, so it kind of fits inside the element. Uh, you also want to hit R on the keyboard to bring up the uh, rotation settings. Uh, and you just want to rotate this 340 degrees. And that'll put it, uh, that'll rotate it exactly how the, uh, it'll rotate the same amount the uh, screen part of our model is rotated. You want to hit V on the keyboard to bring up your selection tool. Move the screen comp forward just a little bit. And you can kind of see how it's not, it doesn't look like an actual screen. It's still coming through the screen a little bit. And this is where we want to create a world position pass. So go to element, uh, go to output. And actually, before you do this, you want to duplicate it with Command D or Control D on Mac. Uh, then you want to go to the output on the second one and you want to change this to world position. Uh, you also want to put this above the screen composition. You want to rotate the mat so that it is, you know, ma it matches up with your screen pretty well. I think for this particular screen, it's negative 20 degrees, and that should work. Uh, that should work perfectly. You want to turn down the f the mat feathering a lot. You may want to leave on just a bit, but you want to turn it down. You also want to move the pass forward so it's just sort of like the edges of the screen that looks pretty good uh, then you want to go to your screen composition hit toggle switches slash modes 
and change the track mat to Luma Inverted Mat. And that'll sort of put the screen inside of our element. That looks much better. Another thing you want, might want to add to the screen to make it look a little bit more realistic is a kind of a, a uh, smudged glass texture. I got mine out of Video Copilot's Optical Flares Pack, but I'm sure you can find one on uh, online. So just drop that on, on top of it, uh, and you want to set it to screen, and you want to decrease the opacity. And that'll make it look a little bit more realistic. So now if we go back into our element composition, uh, it looks as if there's, you know, there's a light shining on our object, and there is, uh, it's just like smudgy glass. Uh, you, what, another thing you could do, you could have it so that your screen comp does respond to lights, but if you don't like it responding to lights and you just kind of want it to, uh, uh, be its own little thing, you can turn off except lights and shadows here by pressing A twice on the keyboard and then just shutting off except lights and shadows. Um, another thing you want to add to your screen comp is some glow. So just go to stylize and then glow. It's really just... Turn up the radius a bit. Yeah, so there it is in an Element 3D object. The only problem with this is if you rotate behind the object, you can see the screen is coming through uh, the element. And if you sat here and did some world position pass uh, work, I'm sure you could get the uh, the model to appear, you know, in front of the composition. It should be really simple, and it should only take you about five minutes to do that. I mean, just do the same exact thing I did for the front, but with the, uh, the back of the object. That's my tutorial. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe, or uh, com leave a comment down below if you want to learn how to do anything else. Next week, I will show you how to create a spaceship in a hangar using Element 3D and reflections, unless you suggest something else that I like even more. See you next week.